All right, guys, we're going to take a moment to make this uh, laser beam tutorial. So the first thing we're gonna do is go into file base and search for pistol. Inside of here, I have a sci-fi pistol that will work really well with this example. Go ahead and import that into your project and create a new script called laser handgun. Go ahead and attach that to a parent object and uh, attach that script to that. I call this sci-fi handgun position. And in here, I also am going to place in my line renderer. We're gonna drop a line renderer material that is compatible with the line renderer and you'll be able to see the color. Now we're gonna shrink down the size and we need to create two points, the fire point, and then we also need to create the target. And we need to align those along to the barrel so that we know where the line is gonna be for the gun. Next in our script, we're gonna create serialize the field, get the line renderer component, and then attach a line renderer. And then we're also gonna serialize the transforms for both the fire point and the target position. Next, we're going to start and be able to see this vision, uh, visual. So we're gonna set the line renderer starting position to the fire point, and then the next index, which is the target position, we're gonna set that at one. And we gotta make sure we drop those fields into the serialized areas, press play, and we should now see the line renderer on those two points. Excellent, now we need to make it shoot. So in the input, we're gonna do input .get key down, And when we fire, when we start, we actually want the line renderer to be off. So we're gonna enable, set the enable to false. And then when we do shoot, we're gonna enable these points to those positions and then enable the line renderer to true. Now we just need to turn off the line renderer after like 0.2 frames a second. So we're gonna create another function called turn off laser. And all it's gonna do is turn the line renderer dot enable to false. And we're gonna invoke it after 0.2 frames. So go ahead and test that and shoot your bullet and you got a firing line renderer. Good work. First thing we want to do is we wanna change the distance and set the origin and the uh, direction of where we're gonna shoot this bullet. And we want to make sure we have an endpoint. And this endpoint will determine how far the line will go. We want to focus that in in code. So we set our origin plus direction and we're gonna set the set position of the bullet to the endpoint now. So when we fire, we should shoot 20 frames in front of us or 20 units. But uh, we wanna make sure that when we hit things, we don't go past it. So we need to do a ray cast. So we're gonna do a ray equals new ray with the origin and direction from above. And when we hit something, a ray cast info, we're gonna change the actual endpoint of what we hit. So we're gonna fire out using physics.ray. And when we hit something, our endpoint is going to be the hit info dot point. And then we're going to change our target position to that endpoint position. So then when we do fire it, it moves to the new, our target position changes to the endpoint position. And now we're gonna adjust the line renderer position from the fire point all the way to the end point, uh, the target position. So if we hit nothing, then we're gonna go the full 20 units, else we're going to stop at where we hit. And then when we do hit something after 0.2 seconds, we're gonna turn off the beam. Let's test that out. All right, works good. I hit the target, it stopped. And then when I shift the gun over and I fire, now it goes the full 20 frames. Excellent work. Oh, we're gonna go ahead and create a new script called hit points. We're gonna attach that to our little target. And in here, this is gonna be our hit point system. So we're gonna use Text Mesh Pro and we're going to serialize a field that's gonna be our hit points. We'll just set that at 100. Then we wanna actually connect to that Text Mesh Pro text that sits above the target. Then at start, we wanna make sure that our hit points um, go text to text and it's set to 100, so it says it's 100 hit points. Now I'm gonna create a new public function called take damage, which takes in a parameter called damage. And when I take damage, I subtract my hit points. I post a new total hit points up there. And if I get less than zero, I just wanna say I died. So I'm going to uh, set that as my hit points. Now I need my gun script to send damage to this new target so it can adjust the hit point marker from above. So I'm gonna go on over to my uh, laser gun script. And when I do hit something, 
if it does have a component called hit points, that's when I wanna pass in a parameter of damage. So I gotta first make sure it's not null or it is, there it is exist. And then I'm gonna do the take damage and I'm gonna pass in a damage variable, which I'll create up here at the top. And I'll just make the damage 10. So when I do shoot, it's gonna pass in that damage to that hit point system. So let's go ahead and take a look real quick. I fire, there's 100, 90, 80, 70, 60, 50. There you go, that hit point damage works. But I need this to look a little more prettier. So I'm gonna create a particle blast game object. And this is gonna be a particle system. These particles look like crap right now, but we're gonna do some adjustments. We're gonna change the lifetime down to one. Uh, we're going to adjust the renderer and put a uh, prefab on there that has nice particles. I'm gonna change the duration. I'm gonna switch this from right over time to burst. I wanna set this to world mode and into sphere. I wanna change the radius down to basically practically nothing. I wanna add gravity. And I also want to change the scale of these bullets over time. So they sh grow big and then they shrink over time. And finally, I need to add a collision to world so that it actually bounces and it creates this nice little particles beam that drops. I'm going to serialize this field and I'm going to put a new particle system inside uh, this area. And when I do hit, I want the particle blast to transform its position to wherever the particle hit occurred, which is at the end point. And then I'm just gonna play the particle system. So let's go ahead and test that out and see how it looks. That looks beautiful. Excellent. Now we just need to do some minor things. Let's go ahead and add in a camera shake when we fire. I want a little audio sound effect when I do shoot my laser blast. And this is what it looks like in the end. And then when I do have my final uh, player and I can attach the gun to the player, you could see what the final result looks like, which looks pretty fantastic. New to coding? Feel like those tutorials are speaking an alien language? Yeah, we've been there, and that's why we built Game HQ, a place where you can actually learn by building. Our monthly membership gives you access to 900 plus hours of hands-on training from 2D to 3D, VR, AR, first-person and third-person games. Plus, you get access to 12,000 assets and daily check-ins, one-on-one tech support, and live workshops six days a week where we cover the stuff you want to learn. We're not just developers, we're gamers too, and we love helping people turn that first line of code into something special. Come hang out with us, and let's build something together. New to coding? Feel like those tutorials are speaking an alien language? Yeah, we've been there, and that's why we built Game Dev HQ, a place where you can actually learn by building. Our monthly membership gives you access to 900 plus hours of hands-on training from 2D to 3D, VR, AR, first-person and third-person games. Plus, you get access to 12,000 assets and daily check-ins, one-on-one tech support, and live workshops six days a week where we cover the stuff you want to learn. We're not just developers, we're gamers too, and we love helping people turn that first line of code into something special. Come hang out with us, and let's build something together.